Hi, I'm Bill Nimick. I'm an assistant fire chief with the Pueblo Fire Department, and I'll be your tour guide today as we tour Pueblo's fire stations. This is fire station number four. It's Pueblo's newest fire station. It's on Lake Avenue, right by Minnequa Lake and St. Mary Corrin Hospital. In this uh, fire station, we have a fire pumper truck here that uh, pumps water at the fires. It's the most common type of fire truck. And we also have another truck inside that we'll show you in a minute. Hi, my name is Alex. I'm a firefighter here with the Pueblo Fire Department. I've been here for about three years. And I'm gonna show you around our truck 34 today, which is stationed at Station 4 on Lake. If you go start off with the front bumper, this is where we have one of our first hoses. This is an interior attack line hose that we can take in uh, to a, a structural fire. We also have some water because this is really hard work and we like to stay hydrated. If you follow me over here to the driver's side cab, I'll show you a little bit about what's it, what our uh, driver's side cab is about. Here's where we have our normal switches and if you pop up into the driver's side, I've got a camera, or I'm sorry, I've got a computer that allows me to turn off all the lights and uh, turn on our um, overhead lights, which allows us to go emergent to your house in case you do have an emergency. Lots of lights so we can be seen. Just on our truck, just like yours, there's seat belts. Always wear your seat belt for safety. Back here in our rear part of our cab is where our emergency medical officer sits. He's our guy who handles all of our emergency medicine needs and if you're sick or injured, he's the one that's going to be helping you out. And these are SCBA bottles and what they are, just like a scuba tank, they have compressed air in them. So when we go into a fire, we can breathe fresh air, we don't have to breathe the smoky air. If you look right here, this is where we keep our main hose that we use. These are what's called our speed lays. And the reason we mainly use these hoses is because we can deploy them very, very quickly. Our emergency medical officer and our captain can take out this entire section very quickly. There's almost two, or there's 200 feet of hose. And then up here is our pump panel. This is where we have all the valves that allows me to send water to whichever hose that we're using. Our speed lays are right here. So if I wanted to send water to one of those hoses, I would just simply pull down and open it up just like you would open the valve at your house. Now I'm going to show you what we keep in our cabinets. We keep everything in here so that we're ready for any emergency. In here we just have some general tools, hand tools like your dad would use to fix up the house or the car or your mom. Uh, we also have uh, some gear in here. This is what allows us to uh, be protected from smoke and fire if there is a structural firefighter. This makes us look real scary and big, but this just allows us to keep us safe while we try and help compartment we have some more hose. This hose is designed so that we can go and take it way up into really really tall buildings. If you see a really tall building with a lot of floors on it, this is how we're going to get hose there so that we can put out a fire if it was up on the top floor. In this cabinet we have all of our firefighting tools. In here we mainly use hose and what's called nozzles so that we can put water on fire. This is what an example of what our nozzles are. They're connected to all our hose. It allows us to turn on and off and to change the pattern from a straight stream to a fog stream. Just like a nozzle you have on your garden hose at home, except bigger. Another thing that we carry that you would see at home is fire extinguishers. Your parents should always have a fire extinguisher in their kitchen just in case. But we carry the exact same thing, just a couple different kinds. This one's with water, and this one is uh, with uh, ABC, which is what your folks should have at home. Back here, we have even more hose. This hose is our supply hose. This is what keeps us connected to water so that we have plenty to put on a fire. 
We connect these hose to our fire hydrants. This is five inch and this is three inch. The only difference is that five inch can bring us a little bit more water than three inch. Either way, they can bring us a lot of water. In this cabinet, we have all of our medical supplies. Our emergency medical officer that I was telling you about earlier, he's gonna bring all this equipment in there so that he can help you if you're sick or injured. Some of this stuff might seem kind of scary because you're sick and injured, but a lot of this stuff isn't painful at all, such as this. This is our pulse oximeter. This tells us how much oxygen is in your blood. We'll put this on your finger if we ever come, just so that we can make sure that you're doing okay. In this cabinet, we have some more emergency medical equipment. Uh, this is stuff in case you injure your extremities. We also carry some just general extra supplies, some tarps to keep your furniture safe from water, as well as helmets. We carry helmets just like you wear your bike helmet, or you should be wearing your bike helmet. Always wear your helmet, so that way you protect your noggin. And again, this is just more gear for my crewmates. The same thing just protects us from heat and smoke in case we are in a fire. Also, if you look up top, we have a ton of different ladders. This allows us to get on top of the roof or to get access to windows in case we need to go up to second or third or even four story windows. We have an assortment of ladders that get us there. Last but not least, this is where our captain sits. It's just like our driver's side, except he has a computer that tells us where to go, what the problem is at, the, at your residence, uh, or, or, I'm sorry, excuse me. It tells us uh, where the problem is and what any of the details of your emergency are. Well, thank you and for that tour, it. Alex, thank you. Thanks for have, uh, having me, let me give you guys a tour. Be sure to wear your mask and stay safe and hopefully we can get you to the station for an in-person tour once this is all taken care of. Okay, here's our real big nozzle. This nozzle sprays 1,250 gallons a minute at the maximum. And we're gonna use water that is in the tank on the fire truck. There's about 500 gallons of water on the fire truck. This nozzle sprays a lot of water really quick. It can empty our fire truck in 30 seconds. So we have to make sure that we're hooked up to the hydrant. We're gonna use this very long. Our truck, like I said, carries 500 gallons of water. That's about 15 bathtubs full of water. This is our brush truck, and we call it a brush truck because it's very small compared to the other fire truck, the other pumper that you've seen. And it has to be small to get into real tight places like down on the river bottom to put out small brush fires, and even large brush fires, but it has to be small and maneuverable. That's why it's so small compared to the other truck. We only use this for those types of fires. We don't use this for medical calls or anything else. Okay, this is Luke. He's going to put on the fire gear for us. We got a helmet. We got what we call our bunker pants. There's boots and special pants, a special coat. And these coats and pants are made of special material that don't burn very easy. In fact, they resist burning very well. And then we have what we call the SCBA. We talked about it a little bit earlier. It has compressed air like a scuba tank. And it allows us to breathe in the smoke. And we have fresh air this way. All this equipment that you're seeing right now, probably about seven or eight thousand dollars. And once Luke puts it on, he's going to weigh about fifty pounds more than he does right now. And then when he gets wet, he weighs even more. So you can see, firefighting is physically demanding. Okay, Luke, go ahead and start. So if we had an alarm come in, this is what Luke would do. He puts on a special hood that protects his neck and ears and parts of his face. He pulls his bunker pants up.
coat. He has a special flashlight, special gloves, a few hand tools in his pockets. He's going to come over and he's going to put on his SCBA, his face piece. And he has to put that hood on over his face piece to protect it. He has a special helmet. That lip on the back of the helmet is for water, so it runs down the back of your coat, not down the back of your neck. He has to turn the bottle on. That bottle has 4,500 PSI of pressure in it, enough for 45 minutes of air. Now he's breathing air from out of that bottle and he's not breathing out outside air like I'm breathing. So talk to us, Luke. Say hi to District 70. Hi, District 70. You can see he sounds a little bit different. Maybe kind of scary if it's the middle of the night and it's real smoky. But don't be afraid if you hear or see something like this in your bedroom in the middle of the night. It just means that there's somebody in there to help you get out of the house that's on fire. It's really smoky. So. There we go. Thank you, Luke. Station one, this is our ladder truck. As you can see, it's a has a real big ladder on it. That's why we call it a ladder truck. It can reach up to 105 feet. And here's a view of station number one. We have a heavy rescue squad. We have an engine. We have a spare ladder truck. And there we have a couple of pickup trucks for other uses, like for me. the ladder and there's the ladder so was they climbed it so I'm gonna climb up the fall. Okay. Here's the big nozzle. like looking down. There's Joey and Luke down there. And it's swaying a little bit up here because it's windy. 105 feet off the ground. This is our truck room where we keep all of the trucks nice and warm and dry so we can respond at a moment's notice. We showed you all the hose on the fire truck. Uh, once we use that hose we have to dry it because it has a cotton just like your clothes outside and it's not like a regular garden hose that we don't have to, to dry. But, so to dry it, we take it into this hose tower and you can look way up there and we have to send a fireman up there and then he uses this winch and he winches the hose up and we let it dry there for about a week and then after it's dry we take it and we put it on some racks that are way over on the other side of the fire truck, fire truck room. 
In here we just have a little shop, like a little garage, where we can repair different items that break. And we go into this next room. And we have washing machines in this room and cleaning areas. Where we clean our equipment when it gets very dirty. This washing machine is specially made just to wash fire here. When it gets real dirty, we have to wash it after every fire and we have to let it dry. And we even have regular washing machines and dryers in our fire stations, so we don't have to take our uniforms home to wash them because our uniforms get dirty and carry different germs on them. So we like to keep all the germs in the fire station and specifically in this room if we can. Leading from the truck room, we go into our living quarters. And you can hear, we have a sign here, no bunkers beyond this point. That's the fire clothes everywhere. That gets very dirty, we want to keep those dirty clothes out of the clean area or the living areas of the fire station. In here we have a kitchen and a dining room. Because we're here for 24 hours straight from 7 a.m. in the morning until 7 a.m. the next morning, we have to have everything that you have at home. We have to have a kitchen, a place to eat, a refrigerator, a stove. Uh, we bring our own food, we cook our own meals, and uh, we, this is basically like a second home to us. <clears throat> we go down this hallway, there's one of our bathrooms in there, and then here are our bedrooms. And we have bedrooms on either side of the hallway, and in each bedroom we have a place where we can have three different firefighters stay here. We have Murphy beds, they're called and the beds fold down for whoever's on duty that this day. We work 24 hours straight and we're off for 48 hours. So that means that we come to work every third day so each bedroom is equipped to handle three firefighters. So this bedroom is only used by Captain Myers today and the next two days will be two different people. Come through this door and we go into our classroom. It's a classroom kind of like the ones that you're in right now and we use this on a regular basis. Every day, pretty much, we have a different class going on in here, whether it's how to fight fires or how to go to car accidents or help people that have medical problems. We constantly have to go to school and learn new things and refresh ourselves on the things that we already know. Okay, here we're at station four in the kitchen and we have Alex, he's cooking for us today. Hi, right, we're making some gumbo today. Gumbo. My wife right. is from New Orleans, so. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but uh, we bring our own food, pay for our own food, and cook our own food, and do our own dishes. In fact, we do more house cleaning here than a lot of us do at home. <laughs> Definitely more house cleaning here than at home. We have to clean the bathrooms, mop the floors, clean the windows, Wash the dishes, 